Hi guys, it's Gareth here from DartsPlanet.tv. Thanks for joining me as always. And in today's video, I want to find out who you all think are the world's top 10 dart players right now. Forget about the two year rolling period um, and the prize money, because we know how that works. I'm on about natural talent. If you had to pick 10 right now, who would they be? Now this video has actually come because a guy I speak to on Twitter quite a lot called Joe Williams. He's been on the show. He sent me a message a few days ago and he just said, Gav, who are the top 10 best players in the world right now? And I thought it was really easy. And when I started writing them down, it wasn't. So I thought this would be a great opportunity to do a video on who I think are the top 10. I've been very crafty and also put four wild cards in there as well just to cover myself a little bit but it is a video to open to debate so please add your top 10 in the comments below and if you think i'm speaking a load of rubbish please do so you're going to see all um of the players go on there as i go through the video and my argument for sort of wild cards at the end so for me the best player in the world right now is michael van gerwen in fact i think he is going to be the greatest dark player that's ever lived i'm not saying the most successful it's a different era but i think that he is the most naturally um, gifted player. It's unbelievable the darts he throw. So there's no point in me going for all his titles and that for me MVG is number one. Uh, in number two I've gone for Gary Anderson, the Flyers and Scotsman. We know that he doesn't go in a lot of the European tournaments and different things so don't win as many but for me personally any tournament in the sun if I had to pick somebody that's going to challenge Gary, um, Michael Van Gerwen it's always Gary Anderson. Always somebody that I think could win any tournament if he's in the mood. Um, fantastic player. Uh, for number three, I've gone for Peter Snakebite Wright. We all know that he had his problems last year, lost a lot of weight, got ill, didn't do great in the Premier League, kept changing his equipment and that. It was actually great seeing him winning the Players' Championship 14 recently, beating Rob Cross 6-4 uh, in the final. Uh, also made a couple of Euro finals this year against MVG. Been at the top now for a few years. Peter Wright, I'm keeping at number three. Number four, Rob Cross, world champ, obviously. Again, great seeing him being able to pick up Players' Championship 13, beating Ian White in the final 6-4 recently. His first sort of win since winning the World Championship. Look at what he won last year. The natural ability of the guy is incredible. He's definitely... You know, he's, he's number four for me at the moment. I think he's had so much pressure put on him since winning the world. Again, he's tried to lose a lot of weight. It's a very different um, lifestyle for him. He's away from his family a lot. But I'm putting Rob Cross at number four. Number five, I'm putting Mensa Silovic. Recently winning the German Darts Masters against Dimitri van der Berg. And then beating Whitlock in the Danish Open. Recently picking up two titles in a month. Hits great averages. I thought was great in the Premier League. Very unlucky. Um, everybody seemed to play their best against him. Mensa Silovic, I've got in at number five. Number six, I've gone for bully boy Michael Smith. Um, he mixed it up with the best in the Premier League. He shows how quality a player he is. Week in, week out. Um, matured a lot in the last few years from going from somebody that could give up very easily to keep plugging away and just show his raw talent. Michael Smith will be, in my eyes, a world champ one day. Uh, number seven, I'm going for James Wade. It's done him the world of good being out of the Premier League, just like it did last time. Um, the, he's got into the final of the Plans Championship just yesterday, uh, losing to Mervyn King. Also going deep in some of the Euros at the moment. James Wade is a quality player, got to be in the top ten for me. And it wouldn't surprise me if he don't climb the rankings <coughs> Excuse me, a bit more this year. Daryl Gurney, I'll put in at number eight now. He obviously won the World Grand Prix last year. Um, new dad and that at the moment. But when he plays really well, he can mix it with the best. We see that in the Premier League. Look at the amount of 180s he hit. It was insane in some of the games. He was unlucky not to get into the um, semi-finals. He had far too many draws that could easily have been wins. And he showed that he can mix it up week in, week out with the world's best players. And that is why I put Daryl Gurney in at number eight. Number nine, I couldn't leave out Raymond Van Barneveld. Um, I know that he has his off days. He doesn't play as well on, on as, as we all want him to. And I'm sure that many of you are there like me that get really, really, really frustrated at times. But not just from what he's won in the past. If Raymond Van Barneveld is in the right mood, I'm sure that many of you, like me, 
always give him a chance to win any tournament he enters. And I had to put Barney in at number nine. And number 10, I've had to put in Adrian Lewis. Natural raw talent. Again, he's had a lot of problems over the last couple of years with uh, stuff going off the board, you know, stuff going on in his personal life, sorry. Um, and he, he obviously lost all that money, was protecting a lot of it, he dropped down. He's playing really well in a minute. It's only a matter of time before Adrian Lewis get back into the top 10 in the rankings. And for me, without question, he is a top 10 player in the world. So they are my top 10 players right now. Now, this is the other section I'm going to. It's the argument bit where these four players could easily be in there in my eyes. So first of all, let's go uh, Simon Whitlock. He'd done okay in the Premier League. Obviously, he faded away at the end. Uh, recently got to the final of the uh, Danish Darts Open. Uh, you know, I couldn't leave him out. There is an argument for him. And I know that a lot of you in your top 10 are going to have the wizard in there. So... That was my first uh, wild card or argument, should I say. Uh, next has got to be Ian White. Ian White is an absolute great floor player. Go, go deep in loads of tournaments, as we all know. Make finals and that. I just wish that Ian White would actually bring it onto the big TV screens. Whether he will, I just hope he's not going to be one of these players that never really deliver at his best on the TV. Because on the floor, he is a seriously, seriously good player. Number 13, here we go. Corey Cabby. For me, he will be world champion. He will win lots of um, tournaments. He will win loads of majors. He is the real deal in my eyes. We know that he's all got his visa issues going on and that, but when he get back um, and playing in the tournaments regular, it's only a matter of time before we see Corey Cabby as a world top 10 player and world champion in the next few years. Do not write him off. Even if you don't like him, is he still in your top 10? And last but not least, Dimitri Vandenberg, World Youth Champion. Obviously also done really well um, in the German Darts Masters. Some insane averages. Losing out to Suljevic in the final. This kid can play. Hits huge averages. Again, he's definitely, for me, going to be a world champion in the future. So they are my four that could easily have replaced the top 10. I hope that you've enjoyed this video and I cannot wait to see who your top 10 players are. Please, please, please do get involved and comment below and I will get back to all of you. I'll be sharing this video through social media also. So that's pretty much it for this one. Thank you ever so much for watching. For those of you that have not subscribed to dartsplanet.tv yet, I'm nearly at that magical thousand please hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to turn your notifications on and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.